time for Wednesday's hour number two on Hashtag Daily K with your host, Peter Bint. Korean dramas, movies and even lyrics. Why is the world paying attention to Korean stories? From classics to modern masterpieces, time to dig deep into the charms of Korean literature. On Check It Out... With Paul Matthews. That's right, we introduce various Korean literature masterpieces to you every Wednesday. Talk about their cultural implications after all the readings with Sir Paul Matthews. Well, you not, sir. You haven't been officially knighted yet. No, I'm surprised. The British <laughs> Embassy has not been in touch. Ambassador Colin Crooks, if you'd like to... Uh, Offer me a knighthood. I don't think that's within your purview, but if you'd like to, <laughs> I'll happily accept. Uh, he seems like, a, I don't know, a fitting person for the role. He speaks pretty good Korean, He's I've heard. Brilliant. I've not met him. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, he he was here when the when Queen Elizabeth II came to visit in the late 90s. Oh, my he goodness. He was working in the embassy then, so he has a long history with Korea. I'm, I am I think he's great. I, th- I haven't met him, yeah. but from what I've seen of how he's conducted himself, of how he's behaved as ambassador uh, for the UK to South Korea, he's doing an excellent job. Wow, here in the 90s when Queen Elizabeth was here. The late 90s. He, she was here, I think, coincidentally. I don't think it was deliberate for her birthday. Yes. One of her birthdays, of course. And I heard a story that uh, when she was down in Andong, I think it was, they had to... Well, they didn't have to. I think this was the point of the story. They didn't have to because she was saying that... She, as protocol, royal protocol, she was not going to be eating at her event. Yes. Um, but they still put on an incredible spread for mm. her. I was like, that's such a waste. Well, I hope it's people Korean got hospitality. To eat it. Yeah, but they put on so, so much despite hearing that and then listening to like the hardships of the people who are under pressure to make it look and taste amazing. Yeah. And then I can't. Remember the moral of the story. Did Queen Elizabeth try anything? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I was just a Queen Elizabeth II, I think everyone was excited when she came. Yes. It was a big event for Korea, a very yeah. important event. So so I'm sure they were grateful nonetheless yes. that she'd gone also to one of the best places in Korea. She went down to the Haohe uh, village, yeah. to that mask village in Andong. It is Had beautiful. a fantastic time. Lots of tradition down there. But maybe she should have gone to Cheju. Maybe she should have come to Adidang Tower. Or maybe she should have gone to Jeju. And Daddy Dung Studio in Jeju is yeah, what you mean. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You've got See, to see the Daddy Dung line. I'm trying to push the Jeju aspect <laughs> for today's show. Just trying to slowly get you back on track. Oh, is that all? You've not even asked me how about. I am today. How are I'm, you I'm, today? I'm fine. Paul? That was coming up. Don't jump the gun, okay? I don't well, we're, like we're a full it. 15 minutes into our conversation, Peter. <laughs> I don't like it when people force me to do things. Uh, my wife can attest to that. Uh, you're having a good September. I love September. One of my favourite months in Korea. In England as well? It's not bad in England, but it's better in Korea. I think in England as well, although I haven't been back in September for about eight years, seven, eight years, we're getting more Indian summers in the September. Sure. Yeah, yeah but like here, Indian here in Korea, I think it's the relief after a very, very hot August. And we had one of the hottest Augusts on record. So many tropical nights. I'm still sweating in September, Paul. So... Uh, uh, yes, we all do. Yeah. <laughs> but you get cool breezes. You get cool evenings. And there's also the anticipation of October and November of the start of proper autumn and into winter. And then even better, mm. we've got next week. Next week. You know, you don't know what next week is. Well, since we're on the 11th of September in the lunar calendar, that is minus the five, carry over the four. Chuseok. Yes. yes. Next week is Chuseok. So I think that's something that many, many people here in Korea look forward to. It's a good chance to, uh, like Queen Elizabeth II, if she did eat, yeah. have a feast. Yeah, have a feast, put on a spread, or just have some time off work, which is rather nice as well. Um, we are going to be getting into some kind of book today. I have no idea what it might be about. Please introduce it. We did, we did sort of push the change oh, you aspect. Oh, it's, that's what you meant. Yes. Now, I know that some of our listeners have a bone to pick with me sometimes about how tragic and sad some of my stories can be. Many bones to pick. It's not my fault. Well, you this picked the books. Literature. Is it not your fault? There's a Limited, there's a limited choice. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, right. so, so are I've we got saying today, something happy. Yes. Got something to brighten up your mid-September good, good, right good. before Chuseok. I've got a heartwarming romance for you. It's called Romancing on Cheju. Oh. It's by Park Hyunju, or Hyunju Park, as she's titled in English, translated mm-hmm. by Paige Morris. And we get three best friends, three women, uh, who decide to go to Cheju Island to find a mysterious man that once <gasps> charmed. One of the trio. Wow. There are bees, there are mysteries, and much, much more. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about the birds and the bees there. No, no, it's, there's literal bees. He's, he's a beekeeper. Wow. I'm trying to find a beekeeper. It sounds like a reverse Mamma Mia, where there's one man in this case who charmed a trio of best friends. But there's no, there's no children. There's no singing? There's no children. There's no ABBA? No. Okay. Totally. And it also, it's only the one woman who's in love with the man. Oh. The other two, well, they've got their own twisted entanglements to deal with. Oh, I'm really, really curious. Okay, romancing on Jeju. Did you hear, just FYI, because you said Hyunju Park as it's uh, printed on the book yes. in the literature. Did you hear the new official way of, um, how do you say it in English, Pyogi, <laughs> like writing down Western names? Now. Yeah, it's now all capitals, surname, uh, first given name, and then second or third given name. Spaces in between. I didn't get the memo for middle names. So is the middle name done with a space after the first name? Yeah, so name? I've been doing that anyway. That's how it's for most of my interactions, especially for the government. Me so I, I put capital letters, Matthews, space, Paul, space, Richard. Yeah, so I'm going to call you Matthews from now on, if that's okay. That used to be when, my nickname in school. When in career. Matthews. Oi, Matthews. What would be the like disparaging nickname that sounds or rhymes with Matthews. Did you have one? No, there wasn't one. Oh, with Bint, there were so many. I know. I think Bint in of itself in British English was enough. Uh, tell us about the author Park Hyunju or Hyunju Park. It sounds very familiar to me. Uh, well, because there's lots of parks and there's lots of Hyunjus in Korea. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, it's the first time featuring her, but very glad we can. She's not just a novelist. She's also an essayist. She's a translator. She's a critic. Ooh. She's got many strings to her bow. Um, she studied English language and literature at Korea University. One of the um, big three. Yeah, then went on to study in the US. She studied linguistics there for a postgraduate degree. Wow. And then she began working as a translator, English to Korean. Oh, and then okay. that translation led to her own writing, so mm-hmm. writing essays and then writing stories. And this is her second novel. It's the first one to be translated into English. And what's interesting is the Korean title is very different to the English title. Oh. English title is Romancing on Cheju. The Korean title is Searching for Honeyman. Ah, which links us to the bees a little bit more firmly, I suppose. But also links us to a documentary. Oh. Uh, have you ever heard of Searching for Sugarman? Yeah, for some reason I have. Yeah, this was a big hit here in Korea. It was uh-huh. an indie documentary about a filmmaker who wanted to find this long-lost singer uh-huh. who used to be famous and then he sort of seemingly disappeared or, okay. or did he. Yeah. And so they went searching for Sugarman. And so here... The project that the three women are on, and the Korean title of the book is Searching for Honeyman. I see. I think that led to like a few spin-off shows where they were rediscovering artists who were once famous. Yes. Thanks to that documentary. It was a big deal. I think even Sugarman came to Korea. I do believe here. so, yeah. Um, and, you know, we were talking about this during the song break, that the song titles often don't match up in English and Korean, literally at least. Yeah, like what was the song you just played before? Hangorum. Yeah, which is like one step. Yeah, but it's day by day, the English. Sometimes they're going for a different feel in the English. It normally has a similar spirit to it, yeah. even though the name may be completely different. Yeah, I guess Hangorum, one step, day step by, by day. Step by step. There you go. We got there in the end. Translate to Paige Morris. Yes, it's our second time featuring her. Uh, The first time was, uh, I think, a few months ago, um, where she was featured as Paige Anya Morris. Ah. We featured one of those chat books, a brilliant translated short story. Mm -hmm. Um, So very glad to have another of her translations. She's from the US, from Jersey City in New Jersey. She studied at Brown University, did her MFA in creative writing at Rutgers University. And she's won quite a few awards for her translations. Uh, She's translated books for younger readers. She's translated books for adult readers. And she's done a brilliant job with this book. I think if you're the kind of person who likes a little bit of romance, a little bit of mystery, (sighs) this book is really up your street. 
I can't remember the last time we did like a happy romantic thing. The thing that springs to mind that we did recently was that weird guy who I think ended up being a murderer in a we've, thing. We've done other things. I think we, I try and find books like this. And in a couple of weeks' time, mm. we've, got, we've got another healing <gasps> book oh. coming up. Because they are... It's a big trend now to have these healing stories yes. that may or may not have romance. Like we had the, the Dalagut Dream Department Store. That's just fine. less about romance, but more about hope and dreaming and life. Okay. So, so I do try and find a mix of books. But please understand, dear listeners, I love you dearly. <laughs> but I, I'm trying to bring you a, a variety. Absolutely. We um, do appreciate you. And, and next week's going to be sad. Okie dokie. Good uh, pre-warning. Uh, first reading. So is this a short story? No, it's a novel. A full um, novel. Yeah, it's it, it's published by one of the big online sellers, which mm. means if you subscribe to them, it's actually free to read. Oh, um, I paid for my digital copy, but yeah. So um, it's a full novel. Um, it's actually, uh, I think it's like 300 pages. It's a pretty big one, but it's a very, very good one. And we're going to start at the very beginning, which sets things out, sort of a relationship, especially between two of the characters. Here we go. The Searching for Honeyman project was born out of a conversation with Doromi. It may seem cliché to say now, but no one could have predicted then just how dramatically that conversation would change their lives. That day was a special one for Park Haddam, not only because of what it would ultimately come to mean, but because it also happened to be her 36th birthday. It was the day she distinctly felt she had crossed over that decade's halfway mark and into her late thirties. There was another reason that day was so special too, but Haddam didn't have time to dwell on it. Right then, she was sitting, alone and anxious, at a table for four in a popular restaurant with a line that went out the door and around the corner. Haddam's waiter had already come around to her table three times and filled her glass with water. But if he was judging her for taking up the table, he didn't show it. For that, Haddam was grateful. Her seat faced the door at such an angle that the people waiting in line could see how long the other chairs at her table remained empty. To avoid their pointed stares, Haddam studied the menu so hard she practically memorized it. She had just decided on a salad when a familiar face appeared in the doorway. Romy, over here! Romy made her way to the table, her long, fanned-out skirt fluttering and grazing other customers in the restaurant as she moved around them. Sorry I'm late, she said, and on your birthday too, I'm such a mess, sorry, really. Sure enough, the look of apology on Romy's face was as pure as 24 karat gold. Haddam knew Romy had a tendency to be late, so she had come to expect as much, but the past half hour had done a number on her nerves. Rather than irritation or resentment, Haddam felt more relieved than anything to see Romy come through that door. And that's Jeju, the track title, talking about the story Romancing in Jeju. Romancing on! On, on Jeju, as in on Jeju Island, I suppose. Yes. Searching for Honeyman being the literal translation of the Korean title. And also the name of the project. That is mentioned literally yeah, at, at the, the very beginning. start of the book. This is what, this is what Haddam sets up. Uh, a searching for Honeyman project. Is this when the that conversation takes place at this birthday bash yeah this is when it all starts okay so we've got we've got these three friends one of them has not arrived she's also late because she's in a business meeting oh dear so we have Haddam who's the filmmaker mm -hmm. documentary maker we have Romy who's an illustrator she's quite well known online uh -huh. and then we have Cha Young who's the businesswoman Ooh. and they're very very different but they're very very close they're thick as thieves and they're all in their mid to late 30s okay so they're of an age where maybe they're thinking about love maybe about romancing <clears throat> maybe about settling down maybe about watching Mamma Mia together <laughs> um, but yeah so they have this birthday dinner for Haddam at the French restaurant uh -huh. and they're feeling their age Haddam especially hmm. now she's in her late 30s officially turning okay. 36 and they start talking about relationships and friendships and issues and so on and then that leads Romy who sort of goes off on tangents uh -huh. 
to tell them about the time she met this guy on Jeju Island. Oh, it was originally on Jeju Island. Yeah. Okay. So she she tells them she was exhibiting at this trade fair, and he just turned up. He came to a stand, said, "Oh, I'm a fan. You know, I follow you on wow. the on the on the gram." They went for donuts and coffee. They had a great chat. He said he was a beekeeper. They got on really well. He came back the next day, but he'd smartened up. Wow. He was dressing a bit nicer. Had you know, sort his hair out. He even got her a box of boutique chocolates, not from the convenience store, but from a very nice posh shop in Cheju City. They had another coffee date. They didn't exchange numbers because she thought, well, he follows me on the social media networks, yeah. so he'll just message me there. Yeah, but he didn't, and that was it. Yeah,、oh, never saw him again. Okay, so it wasn't like a, a, a heated fling or anything. No, it was but just it was a moment. It was a, a moment moments. where she felt this connection. And、mm. She really thought that this, you know, this might sort of. Bloom into something else. Okay, and she's tried to have a look for him online, but she's never been able to find him. He's never messaged her. Okay, and they're you know Adam and Chagi, and you're thinking about this, and and they're convinced. Look, he really liked you. Wow. Because if he came the next day, yeah, you know, bumping into him is one thing, but coming the next day, smartening up, getting you these chocolates, you know, this is a big deal.、Yeah. It meant that he was interested. Okay, so then why don't we? Go and find him, and、wow. Adam's like, "Why don't we make a documentary?" Wow, this is from my perspective, clutching at straws, making a big deal out of what but, could be attention. But it sounds fun. But it sounds like fun. It、yeah. sounds like this is something that could be good to do. It's like an, an escape from real life for a little、yeah. bit. It's like, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to make a documentary, and so that's what they. Wow.、Do. And so as this story unfolds, as we go chapter by chapter, we sometimes get these flashbacks、mm-hmm. to what's happened in these women's and other people's lives. Okay.、Um, so, for example, we learn that nine years earlier,、uh, Hadam、uh, was in a fire,、oh, um, no. and her boyfriend at the time, Jung, actually saved her as she was running back to get the camera and the film. And he stopped her,、wow. and that led to them splitting up. Okay. He now lives on Cheju Island. He's working as a civil servant. Oh, a twist in the tale. Yeah, but they're they're on good terms.、Okay. They don't talk much. But he sort of, she contacts him, and he says, "Well, I, I shouldn't really do anything. The most I can do, legally speaking,、yeah. is give you a list of three beekeepers I think might possibly be this guy." Wow. Yeah, because these young youngish men who didn't live on Cheju originally have come here. Okay. Uh, and so all these memories are coming back for Hadam. So Romi and Hadam go first. Chag Young's busy in Hawaii. She's got a business meeting,、uh-huh. and then her boss makes her take back a heavy bag of golf clubs because、okay. she's going to Jeju, and he's also going to Jeju, and he's over the weight limit.、Uh-huh. So he pushes it on her. All right. And so they're meeting beekeepers as she's heading to the airport.、Mm-hmm. At the airport, she's this is quite quite good looking guy. Oh, Korean guy.、Okay. He's all, yeah, he's all right. He helps her with a bag. Does this? Does that?、Lovely. Happens to be seated near on the plane. <sighs> um, she likes the look of him. Oh, another romance. Well, she's engaged. Oh. Uh, and she's having problems with her mother-in-law to be. Uh oh. Because her mother-in-law is pressuring her about the furniture for the new house. They haven't even found a house. They haven't even got married. <laughs> And her mother-in-law、Sorry. is going. Oh well, I can buy it for you, and then I'll put it into storage. It's like she doesn't need this, and she's, you know,、oh. she's travelling from Hawaii. She's stressed. She's got a headache.、Okay. She's quite grumpy. Sort of snaps at everyone. Not, not the best condition. No, gets to Incheon. She's got to transfer to Kimpo to fly to Jeju, and、oh. that's、uh, that's annoying. The man is going that way too, and he also、Ooh. carries a bag for a bit because the golf clubs are heavy. And they both arrive late in the evening in Jeju. But because the timings were so close, their bags didn't get transferred, so their bags are on the next flight over. <sighs> which means she has to wait, and she's、with、exhausted.、Him. Well, no, she doesn't want to wait with him,、okay. so she tries to have a nap on one of the airport benches. Okay.、Um, and while she's sort of nodding off, this guy puts—I don't. She doesn't know, a towel, a blanket on her. Oh, that's weird. She's trying to、weird. snub him. He's saying it's clean, it's clean, and she just falls asleep again. And that's. Where we get our second reading, so it's not just one romantic story potentially. No, 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 spo- no, no spoilers. Let's check it out. At some point, Cha Gyeong must have fallen asleep again. How long had she been out? Someone was calling her name, Yun Cha Gyeong. She woke up, startled. The beach towel slipped to the ground. Eyes open, she could see the owner of that voice kneeling before her. 
He was looking up at her with concern. Your luggage came out. I, I was rude again and got it for you. He stood and pointed to the bags on his cart. I had to check your name to make sure it was yours, but I didn't look at anything aside from that. Don't worry, that's the end of my rudeness for today. With that, he loaded the suitcase next to her onto the cart too. Chao Young pressed a hand against a column as she stood on shaky legs. But then I may as well extend the favour out to your car. It was already after midnight. As they left the airport, the island air cloaked Chao Young like a blanket that wasn't completely dry. The guy loaded her bags into the trunk of a cab that sat waiting outside and opened the back door for her. Only then did she muster up the words to address him. Thank you for everything today, even though I was kind of rude. Ever since we were on the plane. You were rude, yes. The smile never once left his face. Chao Young felt like she alone had suffered the long flight. This guy was like that beach towel that still held the warmth of the Honolulu sun. But there are times I can empathize with a person, however rude they may be. A sense of anticipation seeped into the space between each word. Chagyan could feel it coursing through her as he chose what he was going to say next. But when he spoke again, his comment was so simple, even friendly. As long as it's someone who can smile brighter than anything when she's not exhausted. He bowed his head, still smiling. She bowed hers too, not really understanding. When the cab pulled off, she looked back one more time. He was still standing there in the taxi pickup spot with his huge bag and the luggage tag that had been attached to it. Han Su Un? She wasn't exactly sure how to read his name. It had so many vowels. Vowels were soft, but they glided by on the sound of the wind, never landing anywhere. His name was like that. She knew it now, but it would soon glide away. It wouldn't stick or last. Chao Yang modified her earlier thought. The odds of a trip that had gotten off to such a rough start ending well were slim, but there were times when such a trip could still be meaningful. This man she'd met in passing had made her trip like a graduation album full of bad pictures. The memory was precious enough not to throw away, but she didn't dare take it out and open it again either. She seems a bit overly negative about the way she's interpreting the situation. That seems like a nice chap that she's met. But she's she's conflicted. She's t she's exhausted. Mm -hmm. You know, think about have you ever flown from Hawaii to Jeju? No, I haven't. That's a long journey. I'd Two like flights, to. connection between Incheon and Kimpo. Okay. You're gonna be, you're gonna be dealing with time difference and everything. Ratty. And she's had a headache on the plane. She's got a mother-in-law to deal with, mm -hmm. or a future mother-in-law. She's not really getting on that well with her fiance. Uh oh. So, it's all, it's all a bit of a confusion for Chag Young. Okay. And this is what makes this book so exciting, because we have these three friends and three different possible romances. Oh, possible. Will they, won't they? We don't know. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Hadam and Romy yep. are still scouting beekeepers. All right. No luck so far. There's oh, been dear. a few mishaps along the way. Um, and then we also get hints of someone else. Oh. Another person, a man. Uh-huh. A memory of a man who seems to know Romy. Oh. But not in a nice way. Ah. And we're not sure who he is, what he is. Is he a stalker? Is he a <gasps> creep? Is he something worse? You said this was happy. Oh, uh, but it's clear he's had his eye on her <gasps> when she was in Cheju a few years ago, and now he's got his eye on her again. Look at all these twists of fate. Oh, it's great. So... The three end up at this lovely guest house that's attached to a bee farm, okay. which is not where their mystery beekeeper that is, been but good if it it's was. a nice place, okay. very welcoming. And that becomes their centre of operations. There's more mishaps. Hadam gets rushed to hospital oh, after no. an incident with a wasp. Uh -uh. She doesn't get stung. It's actually a pine cone that falls on her neck while a wasp is chasing her oh, and the needle stick in her neck. And she faints because she thinks she's been stung by a big wasp. Oh, wow. They're doing, they're doing all right. Okay. And then we get another memory, another man. And this one is a memory of a car crash on Cheju three years earlier. Okay. A man and his wife, his wife is driving. Yeah. And there's a car, it's night. This car is tailing them, it seems, and pushing against them. And then they, they, they doesn't take over. And when they speed up, he speeds up. When they slow down, he slows down. What? And then 
he draws up alongside them and rams them off the road. That's and an action then film. There's a crash. There's bleeding. There's an explosion. Oh no! But before we get too hung up on danger, yeah, there's more romance. Okay, romance is coming, Peter. All right. So, Cha Young. She's fed up with her fiancé. He's just not really helping with the whole future mother-in-law situation. Oh, dear. You know, he's, she's expecting a little moral support, and she's like, just let her do what she wants to do. It's fine. Okay, sounds like me. Oh, dear. <laughs> and she takes an early morning walk on a rainy Cheju beach. Oh. And who does she see surfing? Uh-oh. It's Airplane Guy. Wow. Turns out he's a very experienced, if not professional, surfer. Oh, that's quite attractive. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, there's also a rather arrogant newbie. Oh. Who's, uh, he can tell he's new just by the outfit he's wearing and the board he's got. Okay. Who gets into trouble, almost dies, almost drowns. Oh, my goodness. Airplane Man, he's not just a surfer, he's also a hero. Goes and rescues him. All right, I'm falling in love now. Yeah. So... We get to the point now, there's one more beekeeper to investigate. Mm -hmm. And he lives, supposedly, in this trendy shared accommodation building where people come for a few months, you know, hang out, writers, artists, that kind of thing. Wouldn't he just? Are all the units filled at the moment? Not all of them. Uh, We usually have a lot of folks from spring through fall and then people leave in the winter, so sometimes the units are empty. These days, though, we tend to get a lot of long-term folks who stay at least six months, so I think we'll need to adjust the number of units we have that can accommodate them. Adam carefully broached the subject she had come to discuss. You know, she said, our film is also going to be about beekeeping. Ayung nodded easily. Of course. I heard all about that from Mr. Kim Mansop. We have a beekeeper staying here as well. I think it would be great for you to meet him. He's really enthusiastic about what he does, and he's been living here in our community for a long time. In fact, he's right outside, so you should be able to meet him soon. But in the meantime, Romy had made her way to the end of the hall and now stood before the glass door facing the courtyard. All kinds of potted green plants were placed throughout the space to give it a feeling similar to a real garden. Blue light lingered in the air. In the centre of the courtyard was a huge white birch table with long benches on either side. There was only one person out there at that moment, a man with short hair, wearing a plaid shirt. He was sitting at the table, reading something that looked like an academic journal in English. He looked up at Romy when she opened the glass door. I untugged on Haddam's sleeve, There's one small problem, she said quietly. Adam lowered her camera and turned to Ayung. Just as it seemed Ayung was about to say something, Romy strode toward the table. Now that the clouds had lifted and the weather had cleared up, the glass rooftop itself was the same blue as the sky. That blue was even reflected in the man's eyes. Romy stood before him, looking down at him where he sat. Found you, she said. Adam who had been listening closely to Ion, sensed the atmosphere had grown serious and looked over. Romy called out to Adam louder. We found him! He's the one! Adam watched them. Romy and the man in the plaid shirt staring at each other in the sunlight that flooded into the yard through the glass. Quietly, but still loud enough to be heard by listening ears, Ion whispered, Three years ago, he lost his memory in an accident. Adam's eyes went wide. She turned back to Ayung. What? In the dignified manner of an emissary, Ayung recounted the tragedy. Yes, he can't remember anything that happened prior to his car accident. His wife died that day, and he lost his memory from the shock. This is a B grade K drama, isn't it? It's an A grade. A grade. Car accident, wife dies. Oh my goodness. This is not B grade. This is A grade. This is proper beach stuff. This is the kind of book when you go to Cheju on holiday yeah, you and you're sitting by the pool. This is the book you want by your side. So there is a bit of like drama to this yeah, as well. Of, there's it's not always just lovey dovey romance. Think of Mamma Mia. It's not, it's not all smiles. There's tears as well. Don't recall getting rammed off the road and somebody's wife dying. That's in Mamma Mia 3. Can you at least, because I know you don't want to tell us much about what's going to unfold, is 
his memory loss around that time that he met Romy. Oh, Peter. <sighs> oh, Peter, 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 my sweet summer child. I, <sighs> how can I spoil a book that's only just come out? You're going to have to buy it. You're going to have to rent it. You're going to have to borrow it. You're going to have to read it yourself. How far into the story are we, roughly? We're just over a third. Okay. There's a lot more to come, and there's three women... Three possible relationships. Oh, wow. Will they succeed? Will they fail? Will they find love? Will they find disaster? Will this creepy guy <gasps> reveal himself? He's got to be tangled up with a car accident, oh. surely. Oh, he is. Oh, he is. Oh, I'm getting this. Yeah, so it's, it's a great book. I mean, sometimes we deal with very heavy literature, you know, like um, Mater 210 that was nominated for the International Booker Prize, mm -hmm. you know, which is a, a, a doorstop of a novel. It's great, but it takes a lot of energy, mental energy, to remember all the historical facts and the names. Sure. This is the kind of book... Just like a Hollywood blockbuster, just like a K drama, when you're looking for something to carry you away, when you want, when you just want to, you know, be one of the girls yes. and be off on this adventure, and just get moments of little tingling excitement and danger and romance and all the rest of it. It does sound like a good fun holiday read. Doesn't yeah, it? and it's also, I think, really representative of Korean society. Mm. Because we have three single woman women in their mid to late thirties, yeah, and that's a situation we see a lot more uh, now in Korea. Do, do you remember about? I think it was a little over a decade ago mm -hmm. on the entertainment, the variety programs on TV. Yeah, this new term was coined, not old miss, <laughs> but gold miss. Ah, uh, when they were successful yet single and older. Yeah, Yeji okay. One, I think, was the the great example they used. She okay. was on all the shows. Yeah, She's an old old colleague, by the way, very oh, good actor. Wow. I didn't uh, yeah. Know that. So uh, the idea of a gold miss is is that a, a woman who's getting a little bit older, mm -hmm. maybe in her thirties, has a lot of money, has a great career, but is still single. Yeah. Um, and there are more and more women who are finding themselves single, men as well. Yeah. Um, and. The thing is, for many years, in a patriarchal society, the choice has been, for many women, mm -hmm. well, career or family. Yeah. And that's not really a choice that they should have to make, but it's the choice that many women do have to make. Yeah. And so they dedicate their 20s to their work, mm -hmm. and they choose career over family and relationships, and sometimes even friends. That's true. Um, then in their 30s, there comes the, the quandary of, what, what do I do now? Yeah. You know? Um, has, it, has it been worth it? Yeah, and I think it's the same for men who dedicate their lives to business and, you know, never date, never do anything, and mm -hmm. then get to their mid-30s and go, hang on, am I going to be alone? What's the point? Yeah, so this is a book, I think, for... Well, we're a bit too old for this. <laughs> for people a little younger than us. Yeah. Uh, for Chef Ryan, maybe. Okay. Um, Still seeing. He's a, he's a gold mister. He is. <laughs> uh, but... It's it's so great, and I think it's wonderful to have these three women uh, leading this book, being sort of the, the centre of everything. Three independent women, three strong women, three women who make mistakes and, you know, and, 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 and try and get by as best they can. But also, at the end of the day, friendship is the most important thing for them. And it sounds like a real fun getaway for them, and the book itself feels that way as yeah, well. Yeah, it's what you need sometimes, and especially... If you're traveling a long way to see family for Chusok, mm. oops, this would be a great book for a plane, a train, or a bus journey. That sounds perfect. Your one-line review, Paul. A light and fluffy romance with a little edge to it. Perfect for anyone looking for love. Next week's book? Uh, next week, we're going sad. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, we're going classic. We're going, tr not traditional, but classic because it is uh, Chusok. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to bring a book about family. It's okay. called Counting Stars. It's by Ge Yong Muk. It's translated by Eugene Larson Halluk. It's a short story available online for free. Search for Counting Stars, Ge K Y E Yong, Y O N G, Muk, M U K. You can read it. Let us know what you think. Fantastic. Thank you for your lovely, fun, romantic readings today. Oh, thanks to everyone. Thanks to LTI Career for the help with copyright permission. As always, thanks to Park Yanju for a fun story and to Paige Morris for her great translation. I'll be back next week with another book. Happy Chuseok, everyone! You can listen to Check It Out with Paul Matthews on Adidang Radio's Hashtag Daily K every Wednesday from 10am KST. 